to make it far. I think it's down to Lamar Jackson. Can he make those plays in, in crunch time? And uh, there's some more games we want to move on to, but one last thought. I personally think that Derrick Henry is a very solid back. Sure, he brings up a lot of volume, but I really did like, you know, obviously Dobbins faced a lot of injury issues, but, I mean, this yeah. year he's now healthy, and this first game he was he was elite. He really was. I personally prefer Dobbins, Gus Edwards, and a Justice Hill trio than Derrick Henry on that team because I think there were so many running backs and there was just so many different uh, play sets that they could, they could have drawn. I think that that could have been just as good because even though Lamar runs a lot, he could have at least done some like toss plays to the right. A lot of those very solid, you know, screen plays. I mean, those are really, really elusive and agile backs, and I think they're going to miss them this year. So the next day, there was a game on that Friday night, and I want to just quickly talk about, and I want to start it by saying, whoever let the Philadelphia Eagles get Saquon Barkley should be fired, because that, that should not have happened. I mean, similar to the Chiefs getting worthy in Marcus Brown, the Eagles should not be allowed to have had Saquon Barkley. He had, um, what was it, almost over 130 all-purpose yards with three touchdowns three in his first game uh, as the Eagles did beat Green Bay 34-29. to is this the opportunity for the Eagles to cement themselves back as a legit Super Bowl contender this year? I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be. Right. I'm a little concerned with Hertz's turnovers. That's the only thing I have to say. Other than that, really, I don't see any issue. Barkley's going to be fantastic. It's a huge upgrade. If over he can stay healthy, he's he's a top three running back. Oh, easily. Way. Yeah, easily. I think he could be the, the best running back in the league this year if, if yeah, you play he, him right. He very well could. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Barkley was awesome. Um, Hertz did his thing other than the turnovers. Brown had a great game. Smith was good as a wide receiver, too. This team is great. I don't think that there's any reason to say that they wouldn't be an NFC contender for the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, there's definitely no reason to say they're not a contender. I personally really like the Lions. I understand it was a bit of a, yeah. a sloppy game last night. I mean, you know, I personally think the Rams are genuinely legit at this point. I think they're back into a, I think they're back into a category where you could, you know, consider the Rams a legit football team. They're not... They're not really that, you know, average 9-8 team. Sure, they may finish that way, but they're not like a team that has a low ceiling. This team is solid, a playoff yeah, yeah. contender. Yeah. So I think that the Lions are definitely, at my, they're my pick right now for the NFC um, to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. However, mm -hmm. um, obviously that is, um, that's very volatile. But I do think that, I mean, giving Hurts Saquon Barkley. Giving Saquon Barkley an amazing offensive line was already a warning sign for the league, and good lord. We he had saw to do it behind the Giants' offensive line before. Exactly. It's like, now all of a sudden he gets a great offensive line, and this is what happens. But. Yeah, Eagles are going to be a good team this year. A quick mention of the Packers. Unfortunately, it did seem that Jordan Love picked up an injury the, almost one of the very last plays of the game, so that's that's really, really never good Five to seconds see. left. Um, it, it seems it seems that it's not a long-term injury, which is very good news, um, but he might be out for about a month or so. Very, very good news considering who their backup quarterback is, because as a Titans fan, I can tell you they are not going Malik anywhere Willis. with Malik Willis. Yeah, I mean, they have the potential to do good things this year, and, and you know, they, they didn't do a whole lot in the first half of last season, and they ended up being a really, really strong team. Um, so I... I don't have any doubts that the Packers will still be able to make a playoff push, um, but not the start to the season that they wanted. Uh, now I want to move on to another game. Jackie mentioned them already. The Houston Texans. <laughs> that is a pretty dangerous offense. Uh, of course, additions of Stephon Diggs and Joe Mixon, who looked <laughs> unbelievable in that first game. Tank Dell, of course, coming back from injury. And Nico Collins developing it into a top 10 wide receiver last season. This Houston Texans team did get the win over the Colts, uh, who do have Anthony Richardson coming back. Uh, just any impressions about the Houston Texans? Are they going to be, you know, legit, legit this year? I think so. I mean, I think they're probably going to rival the Chiefs for the best team in the AFC as of right now. Um, Mixon was awesome. 30 carries is ridiculous, by the way, um, for 159 yeah. yards and a touchdown. I mean, Mixon, it's also three carries, uh, three receptions for 19 yards. What a pickup that was for them. I mean, you can even just see how much it hurts the Bengals, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes, to yeah. lose him. Um, and then, obviously, the receiving options. There's really no way that you can throw to a bad receiver in this offense because every single one of them is probably a top 30 receiver in the NFL. And you can't. Uh, I mean, I personally think I'm a huge Dalton Schultz guy. I think he's also very, very solid. So I, he's also another option there. And um, I believe they drafted, like, Brevin Jordan. I thought he was Brevin some, Jordan's supposed like, to be some sort of... This is, like, his fifth year in the league. I know. He was supposed to be, like, some sort of uh, prospect. But who knows? Yeah. Maybe he'll he'll bloom or something. But, I mean, just the fact that 
Diggs had 33 yards, but he had two touchdowns. It's kind of a different version of Diggs. I, I see more big gains in his um, in his Bills career. Yeah, but that's Nico Collins' role. The one thing role. I really want to point out is the fact that Anthony Richardson threw 19 passes, and he had 212 yards and two touchdowns. He completed I mean, nine. And with 212 yards nine. on nine completions. So, yeah, sure. He's a very volatile quarterback. I mean, there's not not a very high completion rate, which is definitely differs from C.J. Stroud. But two of those touchdowns, I mean, his only touchdowns, um, I believe he had a running uh, a three-yard rushing uh, touchdown as well, were, what, 60 yards and 54 yards. I mean, these yeah. are, he's got a cannon of an arm. I mean, they're they off his back foot, too. He's throwing them just like, chucking them up were, there, and they're just dimes. And especially the, um, was it the... The Pierce one was Pierce especially one. unbelievable. Was on two defenders, just right over the top. Yeah, truly interesting considering Michael Pittman really wasn't even used. I mean, Richardson hasn't really um, been able to um, unlock that part of his offense yet. Uh, JT was nothing special. But um, but Anthony Richardson, I mean, he's also so, so strong in the run game. I still really like the Texans. I think the Colts really have a solid team here. Their defense is really, really solid. Their young receivers are sort of um, stepping up. Hopefully, Adonai Mitchell will get more involved in that offense. But I still really believe in the Texans. I really do think that the Texans' defensive backs were truly terrible this game, besides one pick. I mean, it was truly just a joke to see. Those two massive plays happen. That is unacceptable. Yeah, the, the Colts are franchise that has suffered a bit recently, but they finally got their quarterback. He's back healthy, Anthony Richardson. You know, uh, representing the rest of the league, we all hope he can stay healthy this year. And a lot of expectations for the Colts because they've got probably the most talented team that they've had in a while. But now it is time to talk about the New England Patriots. Oh boy, playing in Cincinnati, we were what seven and a half, eight and a half point underdogs, something eight like half. that. Uh, no team had overcome that much of a, de- uh, a betting deficit uh, on opening day since like 2018 or something along those lines. Uh, no one really thought we were going to win. Uh, a lot of Patriots fans thinking not going to be a good game, not going to be a good year. Most of the teams around the NFL probably thinking the same thing. We kept hearing from Patriots players and coaches, you know, the rest of the world thinks we're going to be terrible, but they don't know what we actually do have. We knew what type of team this was going to be. It was They were going to try and run the ball and play good defense and manage the game and not turn the ball over. And that's exactly what we did against the Bengals, and we and we won. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was, honestly, I am shocked that this happened. Um, As a non-Patriots fan, unbiased, I completely assumed that you guys were going to get blown out. But, I mean, I guess you can't argue with 1-0, right? Uh, Joe Burrow didn't really do anything. Um, He just kind of threw some checkdowns all game. Um, Didn't do anything too crazy. Jamar Chase had an okay game, 62 yards, kind of got locked up by Christian Gonzalez. Um, The Patriots' defense was amazing in this game. To hold the Bengals' offense to 10 points... I mean, I mentioned that they lost Mixon, obviously, last year. They lost Tyler Boyd as well. So they are a little bit depleted in that factor. But really, it should not be that much of a difference. Um, So really, just got to give the credit to the Patriots defense here. Really great game by Kyle Duggar. Especially amazing game, Keon White. I mean, he just, that was his breakout game. I really hope he stays consistent. I mean, you know, you can't really um, stay on a 2.5 sack uh, pace unless you're like Nick Bosa or Miles Garrett or TJ Watt. Um, but, I mean, who knows? Juwan Bentley was also really solid, probably our best um, in terms of uh, tackling that entire game. But um, Ramondre Stevenson, four years, $36 million. I mean, sure, the running back market, the, um, the average uh, pay per year doesn't vary too much. It's not really um, a massive market. Not, I don't believe any running backs are making over 20 a year. Maybe Christian McCaffrey is. I don't know. But I feel like nine a year was perfect for him. And... His impact on this team is just immeasurable. I mean, he really was everything. He was the entire offense. And he aced the game. I mean, Jacoby Brissett, he didn't do anything inherently wrong. There were no turnovers. But, you know, there's nothing really special about him. He just kind of existed. There's nothing that Drake May really needs to worry about in terms of, um, you know, Brissett becoming, like, you know, reviving his career and becoming... (laughs) Was his career um, ever even, like, alive? At any point, though, I think he was pretty solid. I mean, when Brady was suspended, he had a very solid game against the Texans. <laughs> that one game, um, yeah, very, one very game career. Like, it'll stick with him. Of course, that one rushing touchdown was a prime time game too in the Colorado Rush jerseys. I, I could be wrong, but did he beat us on? Maybe he didn't play for the Bills. He played for the Colts. He played for the Browns. He played for like every team yeah. that you can ever Both. possibly think of. Yeah. He's not. It's not like a Ryan Fitzpatrick case, but you know, it, there's there's quite a bit um, 
of passing around there. But I will say I really want to see Polk get more involved in the offense um, in the coming weeks. But I don't really know 